Okay, so now we're back again with standard deviation here. And this is, I think this can really start to hit home what we're looking for. So again, one of the things you want to be thinking about is how your data varies, right, or vary. Um, we've got the mean, which is the central tendency, which is the one mostly used in descriptive statistics in research papers. Now we also have standard deviation as the number one way to measure variability in the data. So what I've done here, this is what's called a, uh, a statistical distribution. And this would be called a normal distribution because the data are symmetrical and they're bell-shaped. Symmetrical meaning everything on this side looks the same way it does on this side. Now, work with me here. 1s is standard deviation. Negative 1s means um, one standard deviation below the mean, this being the mean, x with the bar over it, and 1s means one standard deviation above the mean. And likewise for negative 2s, meaning negative two standard deviations and positive two standard deviations. So the essence of standard deviation is it can tell you where most of your data are. Now, as one example, let's look at, to help you understand it, let's look at SAT scores. I don't really know what the true average SAT score is now, but let's say for the sake of it that out of 1,600, it's 1,100. So the mean, X bar, is 1,100. The standard deviation, S period, D period, equals, say, 100. So what this means now in looking at this is that, and I'll break down the height of this curve in a minute, but what we're assuming is that most of the data are underneath, quote, underneath or in this set, in underneath the bell curve. So what this is saying is 68% of all data will fall between one standard deviation below and one above the mean. So put in layman's terms with the SAT score, it means 68% of all data under normal circumstances will fall between 1100, that is 100 below, and 1200 SAT scores. Now, if you wanted to know how much, um, if you wanted to look broader, 95% of your data will fall between two standard deviations below and above the mean. That means if you collected data on SAT scores, which I believe are subject to normal uh, distribution, you would find that two times 100, negative 200, meaning the 95% of all SAT scores would fall between 900 and 1300. Okay, plus 200 minus 200 in, rep in uh, reference to the mean. Then you can broaden it even more to get 99.7% of all data between negative three standard deviations and positive three standard deviations. Again, this means that 99.7% of all SAT scores fall between 800 and 1400. So that means what's out here are really your outliers, your 0.3%, uh, which fall are, say, you know, um, under 800 and over 1400. My guess is that real SAT scores um, have a little bit of a broader, the standard deviation is wider probably, because I would bet you're probably talking a range of like, 650 to 1550 would be the, the range here that's represented. So that's one example. Now, let's do height if you want another example. Um, let's say for the sake of it that the average woman's height is, oops, five feet five inches. And I'm sorry if you can't see below this. On my screen, I cannot, but I wrote five feet five inches. So if we look at a standard deviation and assume it's five inches, that would mean, and let's say it's American women, because I think the average American woman is around 5'4", five, 5'5". Five, five. So let's say it's 5'5", five, five for ease of math. 
That means that 68% of all women's height fall between five feet and, well, five feet and five feet 10 inches. 95% fall between, what did I say? Two standard deviations, so 10 inches below five feet five and 10 inches above five five. For, let me even think of my math. I won't even go there because I'm sure you can work with me. And then lastly, 99.7% of all data would fall between 15 inches or one foot three inches under five feet five and 15 inches above five feet five. So standard deviation is pretty powerful because it really gives you an indication of where most of your data would end up being. Okay, now if we break, if this is essentially the same thing, but I'm showing you percentages now. If you think that before 68%, you see the middle, the top level interval, 68, that if you break, cut that in half, you get 34.1 to the left or toward one standard deviation below and one above. Then you broaden it, oops, to get to 95%. So let's see if I get uh, my math. I think we're talking 27, uh, 27 inches in addition to that. So then if you divide 27 inches between two, you get about 13.6 on one side of the mean and one side on the other and so, so on. So you can see the graph goes, if we go straight up, is the percentage of, um, the percentage of all data points that fall into that area, okay? So it's standard deviation, again, is pretty strong in terms of helping us understand where most data are. Okay, now what does standard deviation in the Dawson Long article mean? So once again, our most important attribute we know was number 16, essentially interesting topics or interesting questions. It also has the smallest standard deviation 0.68. So taking, extrapolating what we did earlier to this, what this means is that 68% over here of the data are between one standard deviation below and one above. That is 3.24 minus 0.68 and 3.24 plus 68, which gives you an interval of 2.56 to 3.92. If we want even more confidence in understanding where most of our data are, if we look to the 95% bar, that's two standard deviations below and above. So 0.68 times two is what, 1.36. So 2.56 minus uh, whatever, 1.36. Did I even get that right? I hope I got that math right. I did this in my... Maybe I did that. Uh, no, 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 3.24, excuse me, minus 1.36, or plus 1.36, which gives you 1.88 to 4.6, 0.68 being two standard deviations, uh, times two standard deviations, okay? Um, and once again, because it had the smallest standard deviation, it meant that most of the data were closer to the mean than the other ones. Okay, now I'm also gonna give you the Dawson Long article um, to give you another example, because standard deviation is truly critical here. Um, if you literally can look, as I said before, at standard deviation and say, I get this, you're getting a lot on statistic, uh, descriptive statistics. So over here from the Dawson Long article, here are two of the attributes. Both, you'll notice, here's the mean and standard deviation. They both have the same mean. Both have the same mean. But one has a slightly wider standard deviation, which means uses a totally different paradigm with slightly more variable in terms of people's responses. So once we take what we did before, 68% of the data and 95% of the data, and falling within one and two standard deviations, you can see how this starts to play out. So this one is slightly narrower in terms of where all the data are versus this one. You have to go 0.1 out 
um, 0.1 out in both directions, roughly. And then 95% um, you get even more variable. The, it gets broader, the interval, or the difference between the two. So again, it just tells you this one would have a little bit more integrity in terms of consistency of answer, and thus we could be slightly more likely to conclude it has integrity and represents true uh, where most people would consider it, or that most people would consider it somewhat interesting to interesting, which are the two categories, that two and three. Okay, so we looked at this a little bit earlier. This was the normal data, remember, when which we said the mean, mode, and median are essentially the same. And that's what you're looking for when you want to go to this normal distribution. So here is the normal distribution. And you looked at all this in the chapters. So really, this shouldn't be totally new, but I think I'm framing it a little bit differently. So it is the probability distribution for a random variable the mean, median, and mode are virtually the same. They don't have to be exactly the same, but virtually. The distribution is bell-shaped, should be a quote right there, so it looks like a bell, and it's symmetrical, meaning this side of the line looks the same as this side of the line. Most data cluster around the mean versus being you know, way, way out, or way up here, way down here. And high and lower cases are fewer, which means when you think about um, anything around here would be a high case or a low case. And so what is called uh, parametric statistics make the assumption of normalcy. So I'm not going to go into non-parametric statistics for the purpose of this, but if you were ever to think about your data, um, you could do a box and whisker plot to evaluate whether it falls under uh, normalcy or you could do a very quick check of how skewed your data is to see if it's normal. And if it's not normal, you would use a non-parametric statistic. And um, essentially, there are many of them out there that can help you still make conclusions about your data. Let me go back to this notion of high and low cases that are fewer and far between. So if we go back to, let's go to the SAT score, because that one's intuitive. When you think about it, well, I think we said that 99.7% of all SATs, if we assumed these, this mean and standard deviation, would be between 800 and 1400. So an extreme case out here might be like 1550, which would be an incredible score on the SAT. Likewise, on the flip side, maybe like a 400 would be an incredibly horrible score. But there aren't that many of them because the data is normal, and so most of the data fall between 800 and 1400. And again, there are a lot of things out there that statisticians have understood fall within normal assumptions. Okay. Now, which data is likely, data set is likely left skewed or right skewed? Remember that um, in particular, a way to remember whether it's left skewed or right skewed is whether the left tail is longer or shorter um, than the right. So when you look at this, take a peek, take a look at the data for a second. Okay, you'll notice that I highlighted red data, red data. These, all the other data that's not in red font is the same. So really the only thing we're looking at is are there extreme values that might represent something different about this data? And the answer is yes. So if, I, if this is an age of executive coaches, two samples, in this case most people are probably, let's assume, between, if we look at the data, maybe like late 50s, right? The average age of executive coaches, maybe late 50s, 60-ish. But then, whoa, what happens here? We have a random two executive coaches, one of whom is 22 years old and one is 24. So that means that our left tail, in this case, of the data is going to be longer than the right case. On this, in this particular case, there are two oldies here, one executive coach who is 92 and one who is 87. So that's going to be a right-skewed data.